and I and 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 I would like to connect. I would like to talk to someone else in this chart, and it's sometimes when it's unexpected that means it's doubly strong, and it's like, and that's the that's the the, the most potent thing that one feels. And sometimes it's like, I want to connect with Mercury or Venus or Saturn or something like that. So I don't, you know, you, you, could, you could make a case for saying the nurse in you wants to connect with the other parts of you, you know, or the, or the healer in you wants to connect with the other parts of you, you know. And, and, um, so maybe, so the, talking about Virgo from the aspect of the healer made more sense to you. Okay. Interesting. Do you, do you care to share like what you might be tr uh, transitioning into? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm getting out of uh, drug safety because I don't actually practice as a nurse, and I'm more interested in healing. I've got healing in my hand. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm interested in connecting with other healers, but in a more Eastern and spiritual way. So perfect. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for all those of you that know anything about astrology, the twelfth house is the house of healing, and it's the Pisces house. So, you have tremendous amounts of Pisces energy, um, but she wants to do it. Uranus sitting next to the Sun in Leo in an alternative way. And for you, it's, and your name's Jared. Jared. Yeah. J Jerry. Jared. Jared. Okay. And your, I wrote down the Jupiter in Virgo is at the ninth, tenth house for you, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do? <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. Okay, and so do, do is there? Do you have an editorial eye? Do you have like a precise eye? I, I like to think so. <laughs> I, I mean, I I, I also uh, write articles as well. So, okay. But you know. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes anybody in film, anybody. But in analytical. Is analytical, uh, editorial, precise. Oftentimes but, Virgo's really strong. But is it is it like, is there a sense of like. Uh, Personal organization, in the sense that, like, I mean, to others it might be perceived as cluttered, but in fact, it's in your world, it's in your realm, it's seen as organized. Yeah, well, yes, but see, and I think a lot of times with Virgo, and I've said this before many times, but Virgos will have one area of their life that is totally precise and makes absolute clear, precise sense to them, and then another area that's a complete disaster, oftentimes, like, you know, that's just. You know, somebody who dresses immaculately but lives in a pit. Somebody whose workspace is like gorgeous, but their refrigerator is disgusting. Do you know what I mean? So, but but yes, your own inner sense of order. And of course, we'd have to look at other things in your chart. But if we were just going to isolate the Jupiter in Virgo at the top of your chart, it's yes to precision, to analysis, to the editorial eye through your career. But it isn't too scientific. But it is. But it isn't scientific. Uh, order in the sense that you know, I mean, because you know, how there's like the left yeah. brain and the right brain. And yeah. So I was wondering if it doesn't have to be no, and and in fact, you know, the best way that I you know to talk about Virgo is that Virgos walk into a space or they walk into a job or whatever they know how it should be. They want to create a beautiful womb. They want to create a beautiful, like, you know, I mean, it's a strange ex example, but they want to create a beautiful, let's say this, chalice or gestational space for something really meaningful to come through. So they order their life and they order the system and they order whatever it is so that this whoo, message can come through. It might sound cynical, but does that mean that uh, in the end, is when reality hits in, that the ideal hope, or the, uh, how I want to see things out, you know, things the way they hopefully would be, and they turn out to not. Is there like a sense of like disillusionment? Well, Virgos can have a tremendous sense of like it's not, it's never perfect enough, never perfect enough, and never, you know. But is that like a romantic thing? Is it like a, like an ideal thing? Like uh, it works? can be depending on a lot of other things in your chart, but Hopelessly, yeah. Hopelessly. You know, what? Hopelessly, hopelessly romantic? Yeah. <laughs> we have to look at the rest of your chart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Neurotic. <laughs> But you know, talk about hopeless romantic. Um, no, Jupiter in Pisces, okay, which is opposing. When when I talk about these polarities, if you have strong Virgo, Monica, you have tremendously strong Virgo. You want Pisces to wash in over it, and Pisces, Jupiter in Pisces, is the great ocean of compassion, and that creates boundarylessness. That creates that that says, oh, all this order, all this precision is not so. Please, let's just. Let it wash over us. Let's 
let's let in let's let in the the heart. Let's let in the the um, let's give ourselves over to the flow. Basically, as Jupiter in Pisces, and like I was saying earlier, it can be that such so compassionate that one is just too sensitive. You know. Um, uh, Jupiter in Pisces in the sixth house. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. The very compassionate one. Um, so J Jupiter in Pisces in the sixth house. Interestingly, sixth house is the Virgo house. Sixth house is the house of work. So in a way, you have the, the compassionate energy in a very um, precise way. So the way that I experience Chris is, you know, Jupiter in Pisces, like, he, he will do anything for you. It's the most compassionate being, but, and he does it through like beautiful order, like again, you know, I feel like this great sense of relief when I get an email that's like, and here's how you're, this is structured, you know what I mean? And it's like a very selfless act, giving of one's time, giving of one's energy, giving one's, of one's, you know, does that make sense to people? It's like, and it's so interesting when you have a, a like Jupiter and Pisces in the Virgo house, in the sixth house, or, you know, so when you have both of those energies overlapping. You said Jared's Jupiter is in the 10th house yeah. of career. Yeah. And I'm sorry, your name? Chris. Chris's Jupiter is in the 6th house yeah. of work. So how do you differentiate? 6th six six house? house, yeah, great. So 6th house is more day-to-day -day work. It's like the daily affairs. It's like what you have to do to keep your life in order. It's your co-workers. It's your work environment. It's sometimes... The sixth house can be more like the job that you have to have, and the tenth house is what you really want to be doing. Hmm. So, I mean, if I were going to differentiate that in terms of just work. Good, because look at this. Virgo sometimes finds itself in the position, anybody with strong Virgo, of being a servant to a higher cause. Like, I believe in that. I will give myself, I will be of service to this. I will, I believe in this ideal, so I will give my life energy to this. But sometimes it isn't the right fit, or sometimes you get tired of it, or sometimes you get burnt out, or sometimes it's enough already. And you realize that your real soul's calling is the 10th house, you know, where you want to be seen for what you do. We'll keep, we'll keep discussing that. But does that make a, you know, um, yeah. Act two. <laughs> so, yeah, I would just like to give a chance to ask anybody, to anybody who asks questions or um, anything you want to hear more about or, um, yes. Anyone, my, my birthday is on the cusp. Yes. Virgo and Libra. Yes. So do I have traces? in Yes, you'll have both, and but it will definitely be one or the other, and we can we, I can tell you what it is um, if you want. Or if I'm on the fall equinox, if that means anything. Well, it's it, that's a potent time. Equinox is a potent time, but you're definitely going to experience both of the energies, both Virgo and and Libra. You'll definitely. Uh, generally, I would read more into the sign that you're moving into, so I'd read more into the Libra. But you're you're one or the other. Yeah, yeah. But cuspy cuspy birthdays are interesting. Because you have, just like with the, with the um, houses, all of you, it's kind of interesting. Uh, anytime you have a planet that's at the cusp of a house, like let's say you have Jupiter right there, and this is the cusp of the second house, if it's within, if it's within six degrees of the, the number at the cusp, you, I, would, I would read it, I would start to read it into the next house. I mean, because it's, it's like moving in that direction. That's the feeling that Scott is like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way out. And so you start to really feel into the, I would always read it in both houses, but I would, I would definitely give an emphasis to the house that it's moving into. So, likewise, if it's at the, I also say if, 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 a, if a sign is at the 29th degree, like let's say you are 29 degrees Virgo, that makes it, really potent. That means like let's figure it out in this lifetime. Let's let's get that Virgo thing down. Let's, you know, it's it's a, it's got it's got an extra energy of Virgo before you transition into Libra. Can they, um, I'm sorry, I don't, um, I don't know if this is pertinent to like uh, what we were talking about, but in terms of like for each sign, yeah. Like, say like Virgo, you know, every, you know the virginal thing or the Pisces of, of kind of fish. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, are there traces of, of where the actual astrological beings of those uh, zodiac signs are in us? I mean, like, if you, I mean, it's kind of 
Do you mean not like logical? But I'm just wondering, like the traces of. I'm sorry. Well, there. Uh, let me see if this is what you mean. There are like um, each sign rules a part of the body. Right. Well, I mean, like here. I mean, like you have you know, the fire signs, the earth signs, the yes, air signs, water signs, but like specifically each. Sign. Each sign, yeah, each sign. Yeah, so I mean, each sign could manifest physically. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, is that what you're asking? Yeah, like, Aries right. rules the head, uh, yeah. Virgo rules the intestines, mm -hmm. Pisces rules the feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I think so. I mean, it's some kind of embodiment or manifestation of that image, you know, that you kind of see in the. I, I, yeah, I think it's true. Like, I mean, you know, like Libra is the scales, and a lot of times people with strong Libra. You know, it's like the well-formed male, or the well, you know, it's like the the broad shoulders and the hmm and the, you know, it's like you you feel the balance within the body, you know. Or uh, Sagittarians have that whole questy kind of missiony thing, and you can feel it. They can feel the power in their lower body. And in fact, if you think about Sagittarians, they want to understand things. So that idea of standing under a big idea. And so you have to, again, have the strength of the lower body. So um, uh, a lot of times, people with strong Virgo energy, they'll either, you know, they'll, they, they either will, you won't see it at all in them. They might look like a slob. Or you feel the Virgo energy, that very de uh, devoted, clean, clear, precise energy when a person first walks in the room. So that that purity of the vestal virgin kind of energy or whatever. So yes, I would say yes. The Aries is the ram. You know, Aries is the ram, and a lot of times Aries will come in with their horns head first. You know, boom. So why are Pisces fishy? Pisces, <laughs> yeah. Pisces, yeah. yeah. Pisces. Well, actually, the way way you most see people with Pisces is in the eyes. They they actually do have a fishy look. <laughs> Sometimes it's very they're very soft, they almost sometimes water a lot. That you feel like you can look into them and they just you can disappear in them. They have a very like ocean-like uh, eyes. So and a lot of times you can see Pisces in that way. Or you can see Pisces, sometimes Pisces are kind of not really very full like there's a kind of formlessness about them. <laughs> But I mean, you know, there's something that's like. <laughs> you have gills on these. <laughs> they have brain. <laughs> yeah. So they have Jupiter and Pisces. They have um, big gills. <laughs> <laughs> Huge gills. Huge gills. Yeah. And webbed feet. But yeah, they're, they're, you know, it's fascinating. There, there are definitely. Characteristic, more you know, you can study the physiognomy, <laughs> morphology, anything, and you can feel the resonances. You know, Taurus is the bull. A lot of times, you have the really thick necks. You know, and feeling. Like, yeah. Is that what you're talking about, or am I just going off on a different tangent? <laughs> that is what you're talking. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I'm still going off on oh. your question. <laughs> 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 uh, no, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, yes, Jeffrey. Um, about the, the Jupiter and fire signs. Yes. Um, I can I can understand the opportunity stimulated part, you know, about uh, risks to express oneself and all that. But the one above it about being outgoing, enthusiastic, and sort of obviously it, it really.